So a rather interesting and instructive report has, I guess, escaped from the foggy bureaucratic maze of the Justice Department into the eyeballs of rather shocked and tense nation. This, of course, is the Justice Department Inspector General Michael Horowitz's report on the FBI's Clinton emails investigation. So the memo provides the outcomes of a congressional investigation into whether the Department of Justice made politically motivated decisions with respect to the investigation into Hillary Clinton's use of the homebrewed server and the Trump-Russia investigations. And primarily, of course, the question is, was there bias on the part of the FBI? Was there a pro-Hillary bias on the part of the FBI with regards to the investigation into her use of a private server to transmit, transmit classified emails? Now, the report is long, and there's an entire chapter that's quite startling, I suppose, not so much in that it happened, but rather that it is so blatant and so proven, I suppose. So there were communications among several FBI officials which really clearly distate, uh, show a, a horrifying distaste for Donald Trump, right? So they refer to Trump as loathsome, an idiot, awful, an enormous douche. There are a couple of fuck Trumps uh, sprinkled around there, the John Oliver-inspired Drumpf, which is an old joke that wasn't really that funny to begin with. Now, <clears throat> these are a bunch of FBI officials, not just the um, home-wrecking duo of Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, who were having an affair with each other, which seems to involve pretty much texting and, and not much else. There's also in these texts from FBI officials bottomless contempt for Trump's supporters, right? So Trump supporters are referred to as retarded, the crazies. You can smell them, I guess, uh, like uh, Agent Smith. And <clears throat> what is truly appalling is these FBI agents express a very, very clear determination that they want to stop Trump from becoming president. Now, this is the most powerful enforcement agency in the world setting its swords against a, democratic, a democratically elected president. So Strzok was asked in text if Trump would become president. Oh, we can't let him become president. And he says, no, no, he's not. We'll stop it. We'll stop it, he says. I suppose the question is how, who else was involved, what was the goal? Now, another time, the, uh, he's told that Trump's election is very unlikely. He says, we can't take that risk, and that the FBI needs an insurance policy against Trump. Huh, what could that mean? Is that the Russia collusion fantasy and witch hunt? What is the insurance policy? These are very important questions which most likely will never be answered. So they're saying that um, the democratically elected contender won't become president. They'll stop it. They need an insurance policy against the will of the people. Is that treason? Is that sedition? You be the judge. Now, there is, of course, overwhelming evidence of bias because the bias all goes one way, at least as far as what I've seen. It's all anti-Trump, anti-Trump supporters and so on, and pro-Hillary and so on. So the Inspector General did find massive, almost comprehensive evidence of bias, but the report merely withholds judgment on whether it affected the investigation at particular key points, which seems to me sort of pointless. <laughs> it's the point of having an investigation if you're not going to come to any particular conclusions other than, here's a bunch of bias, but we can't tell whether or not it affected the, um, the, the investigation at particular points. But look, this simply affirms or confirms the reality that we all know. Come on. President Barack Obama and his Justice Department were never in a billion zillion years going to allow for Secretary Hillary Clinton to be charged with any kind of crime. It didn't matter what evidence there was. It didn't matter how comprehensive it was. It didn't matter what she did. It didn't matter what her, her, her associates did or her employees. It doesn't matter. There's no way that President Obama and the Justice Department were going to charge Hillary with a crime. And not least because 
that would also implicate Barack Obama because he exchanged many emails with Hillary Clinton on her private server. I assume that the private server had to be whitelisted, so he, of course, would have seen that it was not a .gov email address, or at least his associates would have known that. So he would need to be questioned if Hillary was charged. Barack Obama would need to be questioned and may, in fact, be implicated. And that's just not going to happen, particularly with the leftist media, particularly with the hypersensitivities involved with having the first person of color as the president of the United States. So it wasn't going to happen in a million years. Now, as far as whether there were political motivations, well, look at Peter Strzok. So when he first heard that Ted Cruz had withdrawn, withdrawn from the GOP race, which meant that Trump was going to be the nominee pretty much, was he said, okay, well, well, I'll paraphrase it a little. He said, okay, basically, we've got to wrap up these Clinton emails probe and uh, we've got to get it closed with, without charges. And then when the Trump-Russia collusion investigation got rolling, then he commented that, well, that's the one that really matters. That's the one that really matters. Forget this Clinton thing. That's the one that really matters. Interesting. So we've got to wrap up the Hillary facade, the kabuki theater of pretend justice, but I got to get onto the investigation that really matters. Now, the day after Robert Mueller was appointed special counsel, Strzok was, I guess, interested in joining the investigation of Trump. And he said, Peter Strzok said, and I quote, for me, in this case, I personally have a sense of unfinished business. I unleashed it with MYE, that's the mid-year exam, that's the FBI's code word for the Clinton emails investigation. Now I need to fix it and finish it. Got to finish it. And later in the same exchange, if there's, he says, well, if there's a choice, if I'm just going to be another FBI assistant director or if I'm going to participate in, and I quote, investigation leading to impeachment. Hmm. That is quite interesting. So I got to wrap up the Clinton thing without charges because I really want to jump on the Mueller witch hunt for an investigation that leads to an impeachment. Huh. It's pretty, pretty early on there. Peter, I'm, I'm not sure whether you know for sure it's going to lead to an impeachment or not, but you seem to be pretty certain of all of that, right? Looks like they're fact-finding, not. Guilty finding, yes. Now, the report also confirms that President Trump was more than justified in dismissing Director Comey. I mean, it was just crazy. So here's the big problem that the FBI faced prior to the election. Well... Thousands of emails had gone through Hillary's private server, right? She wasn't allowed to do that. I mean, for a variety of reasons. Of course, it was not a secure system. And also, Hillary's emails are supposed to be kept in the public record, which means they have to be backed up on a um, government server. So there was no doubt that Hillary had transmitted and received classified information all the way up to like special program access or whatever it is, like top secret, top, top, top secret. There was no doubt that she had done that and the evidence was very, very clear. So then what, what do you do when there's clear evidence of a crime but you don't want to charge someone? Well, you make up a special out called intent. See, intent is a state of mind question, right? Which is uh, you can make up anything you want. Unless there's sort of clear statements like, I, I know I'm doing this, I want to do it. And of course, people don't make those kinds of statements, right? So because a clear crime had been committed by Hillary Clinton, they had to charge her unless they could make up this magical escape clause called, called intent. What was her intent? Yeah. Now, the effect of Hillary's uh, email server in her basement, or was it next to her toilet, some sort of data dump thing, but... And this is from the, um, from the actual uh, uh, report. Foreign actors did obtain access to some of Hillary Clinton's emails, including at least one email that was classified as secret. So foreign actors gained access to some of Mrs. Clinton's emails, including at least one that was classified as secret. The private accounts of Clinton staffers were also breached by foreign actors. They're not named. I don't know if they're known or not known or whatever. And that's what the memo states. So now we know that 
foreign actress gained access to classified information as a result of Hillary Clinton using this private server. Now, the report also talks that about the secret classification. This refers to information that if foreign actors get a hold of it or people outside the government get a hold of it, could reasonably be expected to cause serious damage to the national security. Intent is one of these things like if you act in a manner that is so careless that it's going to result in these kinds of problems, I'm not sure how intent matters. Like if if someone blindfolds themselves and then drives down a busy street and hits people and they say, well, I wasn't trying to hit anyone, like, but you were acting in a way that people were most likely to get hit. This is why drunk drivers get charged, even if they don't mean to hit anyone or don't want to hit anyone, because you're acting in a way that you understand, right? So creating this thing called intent, again, I'm no lawyer, just to me it seems kind of like, well, now we can have an escape clause called mind reading. Now, the House committee did chastise Comey for reaching an outcome that was predetermined because their perception is that he'd basically decided not to charge Clinton before he had uh, interviewed her, before he had interviewed other key witnesses. And the memo that was produced also questions Comey's interpretation of this law. And Comey's basic argument is that because there was no evidence of intent on Hillary Clinton's behalf, she could not be charged. Intent is not part of the law as I see it. Again, I'm no expert, but intent doesn't seem to be part. And there's certainly other people who've been charged with breaching security or being careless with security where intent hasn't even come up. Now, you could argue that these that, that, that any content of classified information showing up in an unclassified system is evidence of intent in and of itself, because these systems are very separate. It's not like you have on the same computer, you know, one email client for your unsecured emails and another email client for your security and just copy and paste between them. You can't. They're, they're te- separate systems, often separate computers. It's very um, distinct, right? So you can't just copy and paste from a classified to an unclassified system. You can't just forward emails from a classified system to an unclassified system. And, and one of the ways we know that is that the emails on Hillary Clinton's basement server didn't contain classified headers. So what you have to do if you want to send classified information in an unclassified system or through an unclassified system is you have to eyeball the classified email and then you have to summarize it or type it all out again on another platform. And that takes concentration, effort, time. Uh, It takes a conscious bypassing of security protocols. So again, I'm no lawyer, but from a reasonably intelligent layperson standpoint, that's what they call intention. Because you're taking stuff from a classified system and retyping it or summarizing it into an unclassified system. So clearly the goal is to bypass classification. That's intention right there. Now, another criticism that comes out of the IG report is that the FBI is not prosecution, it's an investigation, right? He said, Mr. Comey was the chief investigator. He was not a prosecutor. So it was not Comey's job to figure out what a reasonable prosecutor would do with all the evidence collected by the FBI. It was his job to say, uh, here um, uh, here are the results of the investigation, and it is not his job to say whether someone should or should not be charged. That's the job of the, uh, the Justice Department. Now, new email, uh, sorry, new uh, text messages also came up that weren't provided before. The Justice Department uh, has recovered some of these missing text messages. Remember, they said they had a technical glitch and mysteriously all of their important messages were vanished, had vanished. Yeah, you try that. Try saying that to the FBI if you're under investigation. Oh, I had a technical glitch. It's all gone, even though I'm supposed to keep them. Yeah, good luck with that. Now, Peter Strzok and Lisa Page were all included in this kind of stuff. And, um, 
this is uh, one of the ones that showed up is where Strzok says, I'm going to, we're going to stop or I'm going to stop Donald Trump from becoming president. And uh, there were thousands of texts that were already provided to Congress. That was one, among others, was missing and has now shown up. And uh, of course, somebody asked the Justice Department spokesperson why this message was missing from previous document productions. Said, I'm just unable to say it, basically unable to say why. So here's another exchange. This is from February 2016. Now, a lot of these FBI agents, of course, aren't named. There's an Agent 1. He's talking to another FBI employee about interviewing Hillary Clinton's personal IT staffer. So the FBI employee asked how the interview went. Agent 1 replied, awesome, lied his ass off. So they're talking to Hillary Clinton's IT person interviewing him. How did it go? Says one FBI agent. The other one says, awesome. He, basically, he lied his ass off. Now, lying to investigators, of course, is a federal crime. You just ask former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn uh, or former Trump campaign advisor George Papadopoulos. And because they're being charged with that. And the FBI employee was joking that it would be funny if the guy, Hillary Clinton's IT staffer, was charged. The FBI employee replied, would it be funny if he was the only guy charged in this deal? Agent One responded that even though Hillary Clinton's IT staffer lied, quote, ain't no one gonna do shit. Yeah. But, but apparently there's no bias that affected investigative decisions. Now, there are other exchanges that strongly indicate Agent One's belief that the outcome of the investigation was predetermined, right? So he sent a text message to a fellow FBI agent on the case. He was also involved in a relationship, but anyway. This FBI agent said, let's not, basically, he advocated against even bothering to interview Hillary Clinton. Quote, we have nothing, shouldn't even be interviewing. He also messaged, my God, I'm actually starting to have embarrassment sprinkled on my disappointment. Ever been forced to do something you adamantly opposed? In a later message, he also wrote, quote, done interviewing the president in reference to Clinton. Yeah, so it's, it, it's conceivable that there may have been some political bias in the investigation. In a later message, this FBI agent wrote, sorry, in, in a, the FBI agent sent a message on February 9th, 2016, complaining about the investigative work she was being given. And, and this FBI agent wrote her back. Yeah, I hear you. You guys have a shitty task in a shitty environment to look for something conjured in a place where you can't find it for a case that doesn't matter and is predestined. For a case that doesn't matter and is predestined. On election day, this FBI sent her this message. The FBI agent sent her this message. You should know that I'm with her, right? So that's one of Hillary Clinton's campaign slogans. He also referred to the investigation as, and I quote, the most meaningless thing I've ever done. A, quote, continued waste of resources and time and focus. He wrote, it's just so obvious how pointless this exercise is. <clears throat> Here's an exchange between two agents, Agent 5 and Agent 1. Agent 5 says, I'm trying to think of a would I rather instead of spending time with those people, which is Trump supporters. Agent 1, stick your tongue in a fan. Agent 5, I would rather have brunch with Trump. Agent 1, ha. Agent 1, French toast with Trump. Agent 5, I would rather have brunch with Trump and a bunch of his supporters like the ones from Ohio that are retarded. Agent 5, send a smiley face. possible there might have been some kind of bias but it's it, it's hard to know <laughs> it's really hard to know now something else interesting came up so there's part of the department of justice's inspector general report which reports that several fbi officials including james comey actually used personal email accounts to do government business huh 
not not allowed, right? Because you've got a now. There's no indication, at least from what we've seen, that classified information was sent or received. But you're not supposed to use personal email accounts to do official government business, because again, it all has to be archived and searchable and available for Freedom of Information Act requests and so on. And so basically, you have James Comey, who himself is bypassing secure government systems in order to conduct official business through his personal email account, investigating someone who is bypassing classified information systems in order to do person, government business on a personal email account. But no conflict of interest, apparently, either. If you're investigating someone for doing something wrong and you yourself are also doing that wrong thing, that might have just a smidge of an effect on what it is that you end up doing. Now, there's a kind of time lag that goes on, right? So, <sighs> Uma Abedin's emails were found on Anthony Weiner's laptop. This was in late September. And Comey claimed that he didn't realize that Anthony Weiner was Uma Abedin's husband. I, I don't know what he thought. Hey, there's all of these... Clinton slash Aberdeen emails showing up on some guy's laptop who lives in the same place and is married to her, but he said he had no idea that Anthony Weiner was Uma Aberdeen's husband because that's the kind of crack investigation that only James Comey is available. And then there is this weird gap, right? So Comey learned of Uma Aberdeen's emails that were on Anthony Weiner's laptop in late September. But his letter about all of this came out at the end of October. So it's kind of like a month there where who knows what's happening. Now, the report has found that five agents of the FBI, including Page and Strzok, should be referred to disciplinary action because they say, the report says, careless use of government property to communicate their personal opinions. Also, last but not least, and there's more, you should read it yourself, but basically... There were lots of FBI agents who were taking lots of goodies and benefits from reporters, I can only assume, in return for leaks. And I quote, We identified instances where FBI employees improperly received benefits from reporters, including tickets to sporting events, golfing outings, drinks and meals, and admittance to non-public social events. We will separately report on those investigations as they are concluded, consistent with the Inspector General Act, other applicable federal statutes, and OIG policy. So the FBI agents were taking huge benefits from reporters. Again, we can assume in return for leaks. So it's really, really important to see that the FBI investigate corruption from its sterling white steed of integrity. Now, spoiler Nothing's going to happen. FBI agents aren't going to be fired. There may be a little bit of disciplinary reaction. Something may go in a file for show. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to be reopened. And Hillary Clinton is never going to see time behind jail uh, bars. It's, nothing of, uh, of the sort is going to happen. The IG report is the appearance of doing something, right? So people say, well, there's all this bias, or all these questions and all of these you know, heavy leftist Democrats uh, who are investigating Hillary, who seem to be pro-Hillary. Now a bunch of heavy leftist Democrats are investigating Trump's imaginary Russia collusion, very, very anti-Trump. That uh, you've got this political attack force that is used to do the biddings of leftists. And by the way, by the way, this is why it was so essential. This kind of corruption and this kind of pro-Hillary bias is precisely why it was so important to keep the weaponized and politicized and corrupt FBI out of the claws of Hillary Clinton. I mean, the fact that they're attacking Trump, oh, well, that's uh, more Mueller, but the fact that they're all, all of the swamp is attacking Trump is better than it being wielded by Hillary Clinton to attack her political enemies, which certainly would have happened. Remember, all organizations, not specifically anti-leftist, always end up drifting to the left. It's just one of these iron laws of entropy and nature. You look at uh, uh, political... Uh, uh, um, Parties, even the uh, even the Republicans, are unrecognizable from a generation or two ago in their leftism. You look at uh, Google or, or Twitter or other places. You know they're just this is relentless drift leftward for reasons uh, we can go into another time. And the same thing is true, of course, of uh, the FBI. And after eight years of Obama rule, well, 
uh, we can see exactly what's happened to these uh, these agencies. So this is all the appearance of doing something. People say, well, there's a lot of bias. It's like, no, no, we've got an investigation. And then the report comes out and say, well, now we have a report and people kerfluffle over what the contents of the report are. And then everyone's just supposed to move on. It's, it's kind of theater, right? The real corruption is occurring, but you're supposed to look at the magician's hand rather than the actual corrupt hand that's doing the trick, right? So, and there was no way that Hillary Clinton was going to be prosecuted. I mean, I had my moments where it was like, yeah, maybe, but uh, no, this is late Roman Empire stuff. Obama, I mean, the fact that Hillary would have led to Obama meant that um, you know, the black privilege that he has uh, was, he was not going to be called on as a witness or to be questioned or to be prosecuted in any way, shape or form. And this appearance of doing things is important not to be distracted by it. Uh, really, really focus on, you know, speaking the truth to power, fighting evil and all that kind of good stuff. But uh, to be, to expect that this report is going to lead to anything conclusive or, or decisive uh, is, is a fool, fool's game, right? I mean, these days, the mob rules, the corrupt rule. And it is merely the appearance of justice that is uh, summoned. That's all. Uh, with the exception of Trump and, and a few other people, this corruption is growing and swelling. So the mob rules, the dependent and the hysterical rule, the angry, the enraged and the bitter rule, the corrupt rule. Yeah, they'll pretend to be doing something, but basically the swamp does rule. And the, stromp, uh, the swamp strikes when the lights go on. And Trump is almost certainly not going to be able to reverse this completely. He is like uh, McCarthy in the past. He'll buy us a little bit of time in the West. He'll buy us a little bit of time, and that means go out and gather your resources and get ready, and get ready. Because the swamp may push back, may be pushed back a little bit, but then it generally gathers strength and strikes back. So be ready. Be ready for what is coming. Trump has bought us some time. Trump has bought the West some time. Trump may inspire other politicians to buy a little bit of time. But uh, yeah, make no mistake, winter is coming.